In this video, we're talking about the singleton pattern. Singleton is one of the common uh, game programming patterns that we encounter as we're programming games. It's a uh, common pattern, it's a powerful pattern, uh, but it's a pattern that has its problems uh, that can be introduced. Um, the singleton is um, a very divisive subject. The um, the community is mixed on whether or not the singletons are a good thing or a bad thing. They make certain things um, easier to get a hold of, certain things easier to do, but at the same time, if you overuse them or if you're not careful in their use, uh, then they can introduce problems in your game down the road. Um, for most simple things, you're never going to encounter any problems, and in fact, if you do anything with Unity at all, you've probably already used singletons in some instance. Uh, whether you know it or not. So if you remember the last video that we had about the command pattern, we had this really messy situation where I had this command manager that was um, well, it was managing commands. It was uh, taking input and executing command objects and storing those objects into a list so that it could do undo, redo, uh, playback of the game, that sort of stuff. Well, the problem with it is, is it maintains the list. So it has to send a reference to itself so that the command object knows where to put the list. And what you wind up with is this circular sort of pattern where I, I call a method on an object and I pass myself into that method on that object so that object can turn around and do something to me from the point of view of the uh, command manager. And it worked. Uh, but it was, it was messy. So, we're going to look at how we can use a singleton to um, make that project a little bit easier to work with. A little bit. So, talking about the singleton itself, singletons are globally accessible. That means I have to be able to um, get my singleton without a pre-existing reference to it from anywhere in the code. So it doesn't act as a dependency on any class. You don't define it. You don't hook it up in the uh, inspector. You just summon it and it starts to work. Um, and the other aspect of the singleton is what I call the Highlander rule. In fact, if I were naming um, game program patterns, I would have called this the Highlander pattern because there can be only one. Um, and sometimes that convention is enforced by the operating language. Sometimes that convention is uh, enforced by the developer. He has to build that functionality into a singleton. Uh, but there can be only one. Otherwise it wouldn't be a singleton. So let's take a look at this um, let's take a look at this project that we've got. And I've taken the project from the command pattern, pattern uh, tutorial and I've converted it to work with the singleton pattern. And the singleton, in my case, is going to be my command handler. So my command handler, I've renamed it command handler, handler singleton, and I have two new classes in my code. I have the command handler, handler singleton, and then I have a base singleton class from which this other class derives. Now let's take a look at those. So let's take a look at my base singleton class. Now the reason I'm doing it this way, there's lots of different ways that you can implement a singleton. Um, and no one way is right or better than the others. But I'm creating a singleton class that is extended from mono behavior. So this is a singleton mono behavior infrastructure that I'm, that I'm putting together here. Um, singletons don't have to be mono behaviors, but if I want my singleton to be a mono behavior, then I have to do some other extra stuff because um, the mono behavior has certain authority, it also has certain restrictions, it has, um, well, for one thing, it, it doesn't have a constructor. The mono behavior constructor is um, obfuscated, and we don't really have access to it. We can write a getter and a setter for it, um, but we don't have a constructor. Normally, um, the singleton structure could be defined as part of the constructor for the class itself. 
but that's not something that we have available to us through mono behavior. So I'm having to do it this way. No, I'm not having to do it. I'm choosing to do it this way. So what I have is I have the class, right? And I have a, um, an instance of the class uh, just internal to this class. And then I have um, a variable member called instance. And then whenever I get this instance from this class, first thing it's going to do is it's going to check to see if one already exists. If one, does, if one already exists, then I'm going to try and find it. If I try to find it and it doesn't already exist, then I'm going to create one and only one. And then I'm going to set it to don't destroy on load. Now, this is totally optional. Right? You could do this or you could not. But if I'm, if I'm working with a singleton and I have a game that has multiple levels, multiple scenes, that singleton is probably going to be something that I want to have persist across these multiple scenes. So let's say my singleton does stuff like keep score or, um, I don't know, track progress or maybe it looks for achievements or something. And, and I want it to persist across all my levels. Then if I tell it don't destroy on load, then as my scene switches, everything else in the scene could be destroyed when the new scene comes in, but this instance of this class will remain. And this right here points out one of the problems with the singleton pattern. Right? The singleton pattern insists on there being only one. And if I set one to don't destroy on load, it's going to persist when a new scene loads. If that new scene already has one of these singleton classes in it, then there'll be two. And that could be a problem. If I have two things keeping score, two things um, controlling enemy spawns, two things doing just about anything that a singleton is supposed to do, it could cause uh, serious problems. And a lot of times it's going to be the kind of problems that are hard to find because this is a problem that it looks fine on code, right? And the code compiles, it runs great, but it's only at runtime that I start seeing errors come into play because of the way I've got the singleton set up. So now my command handler, command handler singleton extends from singleton and is of type command handler singleton and this singleton class that I've created here extends from mono behavior so I've taken a I've taken mono behavior extended it into a singleton base class my command handler now or command manager now extends from that singleton class aside from that it works pretty much the same I don't even have to do anything with instance or whatever um, because that's all handled by the singleton the singleton class itself and if I look at any of the other commands I can see how my new singleton uh, class is implemented so let's say I look at the um, one of the move commands like the move right command so before I was having to pass in a reference to the command manager itself so that each of the objects or the uh, each of the um, command objects would have a reference to the command manager so that they can add themselves back onto the command list. Um, now, they don't have to uh, worry about that because they just do command manager singleton dot instance, and this dot instance is going to come over here and look at the singleton things. Oh, instance, I'm one of these. I need to create myself if I don't exist. Uh, and if I do exist, then I'm just me. And that's what instance does in this case. And aside from that, I use it just like I would use my reference to my command manager before. This singleton instance has the list of commands. It has um, all of the other stuff. And in, in fact, I, aside from changing what type of class it is, I didn't change this, um, this command manager class at all. So that's another benefit of having a singleton as a base class that I can extend. It makes it easy for me to turn any other class that I've got into a singleton if I need to. Not that I'm going to be doing a bunch of that. So let's take a look at how this thing works over here. Um, well, in the game, 
it works exactly like it used to. My command manager is still taking input commands. It's still adding them to a, um, a list that I can step through and undo and redo and replay through um, the whole nine yards. But I haven't really implemented a full singleton class pattern at this point because well my command manager is globally accessible and there is only one of them in my scene but the command pattern dictates that there can be only one so it needs to be kind of impossible for me to um, make another one so what happens what happens when I come over here and let's say I've got a scene where I've got I don't know three or four command handlers for some reason something weird happens and somebody somewhere put a bunch of these things on um, different game objects in my scene my scene is still gonna play now, all four of my command handlers are trying to process the same data. I've got four command lists. I've got four um, four of everything. So I've got to come up with something that limits my singleton to only a single instance of something. So I've got a block of code that I'm actually going to use in my command manager. So, what I've got now is my command manager on awake, which the awake method happens before any of the other happen. Uh, it happens before start. It happens uh, before the first update. So the first thing that this thing does is I'm going to um, look and see if there are any other command managers in my scene. And then if there's more than one of them, then aside from the first one I find, I'm going to go through and I'm going to destroy it. Um, so let's see what that does when I play the scene with four command managers. All of my singletons, except for one, have gone away. Because the first thing is it does is it goes through and it says, hey, there's a bunch of us here. They're going to be one. The rest of you guys got to leave. <coughs> and it cleans up after itself. The problem with this implementation is that if there's four singletons in the scene. This find objects of type there's no telling what order it's going to return those objects in. There's no telling how these things are organized internally in the scene hierarchy. This was the first singleton I created, but when I ran this code, this was the singleton that survived. Well, how do I know if I want a particular singleton to exist or not? Maybe. It's a persistent singleton, and I want anything other than the persistent singleton to exist. So it introduces all sorts of challenges, depending how I want to adhere to it. I suggest that when you're designing your games, you need to be very careful about your use of singletons, because it introduces problems like this. You already use a lot of singletons when you're doing Unity development. Um, I mean, take a look at Unity's input manager. So I've got this input class that I can use to query anything in the um, anything in the input manager class. I don't have to have a reference to the input manager. I don't have to. Um, 
declare it, define it, find it, I just use it. So in this case, the input manager is an instance of the singleton class. There is only one of them. There can be only one of them. I couldn't make another one if I wanted to. I can get to it from anywhere. I don't have to know where it is or know its name. I can just pull it out of the air and start using it. And there's lots of instances like this of these sort of singleton patterns existing within Unity. But ask yourself, if the code that you're writing needs to have both of these, if it needs to be globally accessible and there needs to be a restriction that there being only one, then you might have a use case where you have to build a singleton. Otherwise, if, if both of these conditions aren't true, then you're probably better off not trying to make something a singleton.